All right, welcome back. So next, we're going to talk about minifying CSS as well as HTML. But first, we're going to discuss extracting our CSS into its own file or files if we prefer. So right now, everything is being loaded through JavaScript. Here is all of our Bootstrap CSS as a giant string in our main JS bundle, which then is injected into the DOM, as we've seen before, as a style tag. So this works. There's no problem with it uh, as far as functionality. It's, it's getting there. Our styles show up. But in production especially, it's nice to have a separate CSS file rather than waiting for JavaScript to inject the styles. And the main reason has to do with performance. If I load this page, I don't know if it's going to show up in the screencast because it's so quick. If you watch over here, we'll see there's a flash of the unstyled content every time I reload the page, or almost every time. So what's happening is that the page loads, there is no CSS at all. All that is happening is a single or two JavaScript script tags at the bottom of the page. So all of our content loads, the HTML elements, H1s, inputs, buttons, then we get to this script. And these two scripts run, and one of them takes our CSS, and it finally injects it into the DOM. So it happens very quickly, but everything is actually loading first. So there is no style sheet up here that is going to style things first. So there is a flash of unstyled content. There it is, one more time. So in production especially, we want to avoid that. It's, uh, it's just not a good experience for users. We want our CSS to load, have it be up in the head, everything is styled, and then our JavaScript can load. And it might take a couple milliseconds or sometimes longer, um, and we won't have to wait to get our styles. Now, the reason we're not going to do it in development mode is that it takes time to spit out CSS files. It's much faster when you're just developing with the, the dev server. You don't want to wait each time that you save something or you change your code. You don't want to wait for it to recompile and rebundle and spit out new CSS files. So we're just going to do it in production. And the way we do it, or one way to do it, is using a plugin called Mini CSS Extract Plugin. So we're going to begin by installing it. So it is npm install dash dash save dev mini CSS extract plugin. And while that's loading, we're going to go into our Webpack production and import or require that module. And then we can use it inside of our plugins. So we'll pass it in. We'll do new mini CSS extract plugin, just like that, and save. And if we want, we can specify a couple of options. We'll just do file name and have file name be the same sort of pattern we've been following. So name dot, and then we can have the content hash dot CSS. All right, so that's the first step, but this actually isn't enough. The next thing we need to do is make sure we're using this instead of the style loader that we're using right here. Right now we're using this all the time. It's in common, webpack.common. So every time we load SCSS, the same would apply if this was CSS. We are first running it through SAS loader and then CSS loader, which remember this one converts SAS to CSS. This one turns CSS into JavaScript. This one is what actually injects those JavaScript strings of CSS into the DOM. We don't want this to happen in production. We're trying to avoid that. Instead, we want to use this mini extract or mini CSS extract plugin to grab those lines of CSS and put them in a new file. So I'm going to actually move this, this entire rule away from the common config file. I'm going to put it in dev because in dev we do want it. And I need to grab module rules. I need to follow the same syntax that we had. I copied the wrong portion. Okay. So everything looks the same, module, rules. And then in production, we need to do the same thing. So module, rules. But this time, instead of style loader, we're going to change this to be mini CSS extract plugin dot loader. So it comes with a loader that we can use as part of the plugin. And this, instead of inject styles into the DOM, this is going to move or extract CSS into files. So remember, they load in or they, they run in reverse order. This happens, then this happens, and then finally, it should create new files for us, including the CSS that was loaded by CSS loader that was originally converted from SAS to CSS by SAS loader. All right, let's see what happens now. 
We will do npm run build. Fingers crossed, no errors. You never know. And you can see it takes a little while, but it should spit out a CSS file. And indeed it does. So we have this CSS file now that is separate. And if we look at our index.html that it gives us, it now includes a link tag up at the top. So we're no longer waiting for the page to load, for the JavaScript to load, to then inject our styles into the head. It's all happening at the beginning. It's compiled, it's built this way from the get-go. So that plugin is extracting all of our code, all of our CSS into one CSS file. You can configure it to do it in multiple, but for now, one is fine. This is all of our CSS, so Bootstrap is pretty much all of it. Uh, we override those colors using Sass, but if we had other styles as well, they would be in here, assuming that we were writing them in this file. And now if we refresh the page, let's make sure it still works. Notice we don't get that flash of content anymore. I'm doing the same thing, but it's not. we're not seeing the unstyled content. Our link tag is included in the correct spot up in the header. And I guess I should call attention, I use the content hash again, uh, just to, to help with caching and to prevent caching when we don't want it to happen. If we change the file, this hash will change. All right, so that should be review from earlier videos. So notice that this is not minified. This is quite large. So one thing we might want to do is minify this CSS. And it's not very difficult to do. There's a plugin to help us. And it happens to have a very long name, in my opinion, Optimize CSS Assets Webpack Plugin. It's one of the larger packages, larger package names, <laughs> large package, oh boy. One of the larger package names that I've uh, come across. So Optimize CSS Assets Webpack Plugin is going to help us minify our CSS. So the first thing we're going to do is install it. So we'll do that now. npm install dash dash save dev optimize CSS assets webpack plugin. While that's going, we're only going to minimize our CSS in production. We don't need to do that in development. It's a lot easier if we only do it in production. Um, it takes time, but it's also you know frustrating if you're trying to debug something in CSS when it's super minimized. It's not a huge issue. You can do it in, in development if you want, but I'm just going to do it in production. So we first need to import it. Here, I'm just going to use const to match everything else that I've been doing. And where we actually use this is not as a plugin on its own. We add a new property here called optimization that we haven't seen before. And then within that, we specify minimizer. And this is an array, multiple minimizers, because sometimes we're minifying JavaScript, we're minifying uh, CSS, like we are in our case. And I'm going to pass in new optimized CSS assets plugin, just like this, and then add my comma. Okay, before I run this to show you what happens, let's take a look at two things. I'm gonna close down a lot of stuff. We have a lot going on. So inside of our build folder, we have our CSS, which is not minimized. It's a very long file. Then inside of our JavaScript files, we have minimized code. So I'm showing this to you for a reason. This is all minimized or minified. Now, if I run npm run build, where we're telling it to use optimized CSS assets plugin to minify our CSS, let's see what happens. Okay, so that finished up. And let's look at our CSS now. It's minified, so that part's working. But something weird happened. If we look at our JavaScript, it's no longer minified. Why is that happening? So it's kind of annoying that this happens, but when you set mode to production, by default, optimization minimizer is set to use a JavaScript minifier. But then we're overwriting it right here by telling it to use this optimized CSS assets plugin. It basically ignores what was there before, which was minifying the JavaScript, uh, a terser JS plugin that we'll, we're gonna reintroduce in just a moment. So we have to manually add it back in, it was there, but by adding in this plugin, we completely override what was there originally inside of Minimizer. So now we don't get JavaScript being minified, only CSS. And another thing I'll show you, if we look at the message we get, it says, warning in asset uh, size limit, the following assets exceed the recommended size limit, 244 kilobytes. First of all, um, a lot of people think that this is a pretty sensitive or a low threshold for this warning. 244 is not really a huge file, but you can see our vendor JS, vendor bundle JS, is quite large now. And we weren't getting this before because it was being minified. It's not anymore. So if we look at the file, it's quite long. 
it's all a bootstrap and jQuery and Popper JS. So now we're going to add in the plugin that was already being used. We don't actually have to install it, but we do need to require it. And it's called Terser Webpack Plugin. Again, I haven't installed this myself. It's already inside of node modules. If you scroll down, look for T, Terser, you'll see, come on, where are you? Mm, right there, Terser Webpack Plugin. I promise you, I didn't install it myself. It's not in my package.json, uh, but it's there because Webpack was using it already. You can see it's not in here. Okay, so we're going to require it and then pass it in as a minimizer, new Terser plugin. So Terser is the default minimizer for JavaScript in Webpack. Uh, as I already showed you, it was being used before, but we overrode it and ignored it. So we're adding it back in. It used to use, Webpack used to use Uglifier uh, by default, I believe. Now it's Terser, but they do pretty much the same exact thing. They minify your JavaScript. So let's see what happens now. Let's try it. NPM run build. Again, I'm only minifying in production for my JavaScript. And does it work? You can see how long this takes, by the way. So we don't get that warning anymore. That's it. It's not saying that our file is too large. Vendor is now 167 kilobytes instead of what, 400 something? Yeah, 484. So a significant reduction in size. And if we look at vendor, it's minified. If we look at our main file, it's minified. If we look at our CSS, it's minified. There's only one thing that isn't index.html. Now it's very short but we can optionally minify our HTML in production. We don't have to use any additional plugins. We already have this uh, HTML Webpack plugin right here. I can pass in other options. I can specify minify. This is part of the, the plugin documentation where I found this. And instead of minify, I can do things like uh, remove comments and set that to be true or false. But I'm not gonna do it here inside of webpack.common because I don't wanna minify my HTML in development. So once again, I'm gonna pull this out and move it to production. So inside of our common JS webpack config, we don't have any plugins. They don't share anything, at least they don't share it in the exact same way. So now inside of dev, I'm going to add in this plugin again. So plugins and paste that in add my comma, and I need to make sure I am requiring it at the top of Webpack dev. And then in Webpack production, I'm gonna require it as well, but I'm going to alter some options. I'm gonna pass in some minify options. So let's do that now, right here, paste it in. And after template, I'm gonna say minify, and the three I'm gonna go with are remove attribute quotes, collapse white space, remove any extra white space, and remove comments. Set that to be true. So let's uh, let's do something in our HTML where we'll actually be able to detect this. We'll tell if it's working. So let's go to our template file and add some comments in here. Like, hmm, how about above the nav bar? We'll say bootstrap nav bar. And then let's add in some white space. I'll just do a single line. Um, and we'll just leave it like this for now. We'll look for that top comment here, bootstrap navbar, and see if it makes it in to our end result when we are in production. So let's now run npm run build and twiddle our thumbs for a moment. Okay, let's look at index HTML. All right, definitely minified. You can see the attribute quotes have been removed. So type equals text. There's no quotes, for example. Uh, we have no white space, or, or most of the white space has been removed. Uh, and then also, my comment is gone. At least I can't find it. If I look for it, uh, I'm pretty sure we'd see it pretty, pretty easily because it would stand out with a different color. So it's not in here. And let's just check that it does work. So I refresh the page. Okay, it's loading. We're getting all the code that we expect. JavaScript's working. It's minified, we're overriding bootstrap, we're using SAS to change those colors. Uh, we have separate CSS files or single file. Where are you? Right here. It's minified. We have our minified vendor JS and our main JS and then our index HTML minified as well. So everything has been crunched down. Oh, we have our images too, forgot about that. Um, and then inside of elements, we still can see everything as normal, right? We're, by minifying it, we're not like corrupting it. We're just shrinking it down and collapsing it into as little space as possible. Now let's just verify it still works in development. So npm start, 
Notice how much faster that loaded for me. That took maybe a second or two uh, to build originally and then rebuild should actually be faster. And if we look at the code, index is not minified. We can see my comment is here. All the attributes have quotes. Our code, our JavaScript is not minified and there is no CSS. Remember, well, it's in the files, but there's no CSS file on its own. And remember the reason we do that is that it takes a while to build those files. And in development, if I change something, I don't wanna wait. And that's it for now. So I'm gonna commit. Uh, we have a whole bunch of things going on in Webpack and we've honestly only scratched the surface in some ways because there's a lot of other things to talk about. I mean, if we look at those that list I showed you early on of the different plugins available, of the different loaders, Webpack can do a ton of stuff. But as you've seen, it's really, uh, how should I put this, intimidating. It can be overwhelming when you're starting out. Um, and it's something that you only really do once every project. Maybe you go and update something, but often, you know, you're not you're not writing code in this file and your Webpack config all that often, especially if you work at a, a company on one large production app, the config file doesn't change all that much. So a lot of people don't have much experience with it. And it takes some time and some practice to get used to it, but there's just nice little patterns you follow. You know, you just remember rules, test, use. Uh, there's certain loaders that you use frequently, like style loader and uh, terser JS for minification. You know, there's these different patterns, but at the end of the day, all that we're doing is taking a bunch of different types of files. In our case, an SVG file, uh, an HTML file, JavaScript files, SCSS, and we combine them in some ways, not all into one file, but we combine uh, JavaScript into different files. All of our different JS files, you know, we haven't touched these in a while, but five different files plus the bootstrap JS plus jQuery plus popper JS, and we spit them out into bundles. They're minified, they have hashes in their name that pertain to the content inside of them. So those hashes will only change if the content changes, which helps with caching and preventing caching when we don't want it. Then we have our CSS being pulled out in, uh, in production. We have our index HTML being built for us with all of the links included dynamically. So we don't have to write any of these script tags, right? This is all done for us. And then we set things up in development mode to be a little simpler. We have our dev server that is going to update and rebuild anytime we change something, uh, just serving it on local host. We aren't minifying, you know, we, we aren't using the content hashes. Our CSS is not being extracted. Our HTML is not being minified, but we're still joining together all these different files and making sure everything works for us. Okay. So I'm going to leave it off here. I know that was a lot. Uh, I'm going to commit. This will be the last commit for now. Please let me know if you have any feedback. Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to think, uh, any suggestions or things you liked. Take a look at the code, of course, look through my commits. And I think that's it. All right. I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. I'll be on YouTube later. If you enjoyed this video, my cat and I really appreciate it. If you share it with anyone you think would get something out of it, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, please turn on notifications. Oh, so annoying asking you to do that.